to another episode of Desire to Inspire. It's your mama's favorite podcast. Back at it again with Dylan and Decker behind me. You can see him in the mirror. You can. Do we have Ziggy in the room? In the room. Hell no. He's crated up. <laughs> I'm drinking a purple uh, blueberry uh, protein shake. So this might mean that my teeth will get more and more purple as the episode goes on. That's exciting. That's going to be a mm -hmm. good fucking thumbnail right there. <laughs> what? My teeth get purple the longer this goes on? <laughs> You're going to have to take the photo afterwards. So it's going to be looking great. I already took it before because I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> I think we have the same hat on right now. Mine just the other way around. We could have do you have the up. one where it's like soft in the front? Or do you have one of the new ones where it's hard? I mean, I don't know what the difference between soft and hard on a hat would be. So this style hat, it's like it's the Legacy 93. Used to be like super soft. <laughs> Dude, I soft. do not know the name of this hat. <laughs> I, I know this because I love this hat and they redid it where like this part is more of like a cardboardy type feel now. That's kind of how mine is. Yeah, dude, I fucking hate it compared to these old styles. I have it in gray, black, and white, and I can't. Too, I bought, actually. I bought the new ones and um, I've given them away, every single one of them, wow. because I, I hate them that much. Wow. Yep. So we're uh, preserving these hats as long as we can. It looks okay. At least you don't look like Matt with that big ass fucking <laughs> Nike symbol on the front. I don't even know where he got that, bro. He had to get that from like Marshalls or like <laughs> somewhere like that. He got that at like a Nike outlet store. He loves that fucking hat too, and every single person makes fun of it. But the Nike check fits his uh fits his head size, head. so <laughs> so it all works out. The cool thing is, you could tell that our friends don't watch our podcast because they never bring up us talking shit about them. Never. Love no support, once in it. Oh, and my sister. Bro, she'll go in on me if I'll say something and don't include her. But the episodes where I'm ranting and raving about how like good she's doing and the progress and everything, I never hear that. I never hear my mom coming to me and being like, wow, it was great hearing about your sister. But she sure hears the ones where I don't bring her up. So I don't even know if my mom was. To them? So I don't think it's my mom's favorite podcast. <laughs> my mom doesn't listen either. I don't think. My sister will sense. tell her because my sister used to listen religiously, but... She doesn't bring it up, up as much, so it's fine. Yeah. It's all she good. Get fucked, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad doesn't listen either. Jesus Christ, bro. We're going here. <laughs> You've been on this train early today, dude. It's because oh, I'm hurting today, God. Dylan. No, I'm joking. Uh, well, no, I'm not. But today's Father's Day. I know this will be like um, a week afterwards. Almost a week after. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's important to touch not only like on Father's Day, but just like the importance of your mom, my mom, my sister, like the importance of family and those people that are close to you, um, because there's a lot of people celebrating today. There's a lot of people hurting today. There's a lot of people um, who knows by the time they hear this or when they do hear this, they don't know that they're going to be hurting or being happy. We don't know what happens in life. Um, you saw the messages going on in our group today about yep. somebody that we knew. And just like that, bro, life can can take a turn. Um, and I think this will give me time. I know we talked on Father's Day last year, or like around it. Um, but as you brought up on that one episode, just like getting deeper, getting more vulnerable and talking about those hard conversations for a year. I believe so. Whoa. Yeah, that's kind of trippy. We have. Actually. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think it, I think it's a good topic because it's a hard one to talk about. Um, but it, it's also important to provide that knowledge because there's a lot of people out there struggling right now with the same thing that I struggle with, but in their own capacity, in their own way. And most people uh, don't like talking about death. Most people don't like talking about the concept of death. So what can we leave on this earth before we're gone? Um, but one thing that my dad always told me literally every single day is today's the first day of the rest of your life. Make it count. And um, I truly believe that today was a driving force of why that needs to be a statement. Because every single day we wake up, we need to be thankful. We need to be grateful. And we need to figure out like if we're going through something right now, if we're struggling with something right now, how can we use that to motivate us and push us through life? And how can we use that to be a driving force and making us better? Um, because one of the things that I don't struggle with, but I didn't realize is that I live my life today because of my father passing away. 
when my father was here, I didn't live my life like I do now, where I was thankful and grateful, not only for the people in it, but for the things that I've been through, uh, the things that I have in front of me, and the things that I'm going to go through. And because of that, I turned into a more positive person, a more optimistic person, and somebody that wants to make sure I spread the word of what is so hard and what once stopped my life um, dead in its tracks to get through it and keep pushing. Um, because when something like that happens, when you lose somebody that's close to you, it doesn't make you, or it makes you realize that you might have thought you were doing everything right in life. Um, but you look back and you're like, fuck, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done more. And I wish I would have, um, spent more time. I wish I would have called more. I wish I, and I'm glad that I didn't have those wish moments. Obviously I sit here every day and I'm like, God, I wish I had one more call, but I know when my father passed away that the last thing we said to each other was, I love you. I know that we were on good terms. I know that any argument that we got into, we got over it because we talked about it. And I think that's what's important is, is never leaving or going to bed at night with hate towards somebody, especially somebody that you're close to. And if so, how can you settle that that day? So that way you don't have to wake up one day and they're not here and you have to live with the regret. Like, why did we fight over that dumbass shit? Um, and so one question I have for you, just because I know your relationship, but how do you focus structure and keep top of mind the relationship that you have with your dad and to why are you guys as close as you are? Um, I mean, we talk all the time. So like I make a point to, I pro honestly, I probably call my mom more, which I don't know why I just out of habit, just call my mom. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, like, they'll be in the car together. So I end up talking to both of them anyways. But my dad pretty much texts me every day. Like, just a, hey, thinking of you, love you. Like, just a random just text, like, throughout the day. And that could be the only text. But so it's, I don't want to say, like, I don't put forth effort because, like, I reach out too. But, like, a lot of it is just, like, he doesn't really let a day go by without, like, at least checking in. And, like, mm -hmm. seeing, like, what's going on. But in terms of, like us being close. I think we've always been like, there's not ever a time where like I hated my dad. Like I've never really experienced like where me and my parents don't get along, mm -hmm. which I feel like a lot of people like go through that phase in life where there's just, as you grow up, I feel like just people have different relationships with their parents and I've never really had that. So I don't know. It's like, we obviously like bond over like mutual things. And, like we do things together. But I think that he just fostered it from a young age. Like, he always made sure, like, he was present and that he made time for us. And, like, even, like, if it was just, like, doing – working on the car or, like, doing stuff around the house, like, he included us in pretty much everything. And at the time, probably didn't want to be doing it. Mm -hmm. But, like, that's – like, those are the times where you pretty much get close, I guess. Yep. But I don't really know. I guess it's just over time. Like, I don't really – there was never a time where we weren't close. So it's hard to say, like, what – why we're so close. Yeah. Is that like a, a value that he instilled in you guys or that your guys' parents said where it was like family first and you guys, I don't know, maybe took family trips or you guys were very open in conversation with your family when like hard times were going on, whether that was inside your home or with others that are lineage of your family? Uh, I actually think it started with my parents. They're both very open. Like we have a very open relationship. We kind of always have to the point of inappropriateness sometimes <laughs> and like uh, outsiders look at us like what is wrong with you guys like i know that's the way that people look at my family because it's it's a little out there there's not really anything i wouldn't tell them mm -hmm. and obviously doing podcasts over the years there's a lot more that they've just learned <laughs> naturally <laughs> through me speaking but uh i don't think that it's hard to say because which i actually this is kind of weird i didn't expect to talk about father's day today but I actually was thinking earlier this week that once we are like moved, my dad's going to visit and I would like to have him on the podcast. And there's like things I'd like to ask his dad passed away when I was like two or three. So like mm -hmm. I never really met him, but from what I know, he wasn't a very open person. Like I don't think that they had that kind of communication until he got sick. And like, I think like probably the last year of his life or whatever is like where they actually got close. Not to say that they weren't ever close, but like closer. So I think that, that shift in me and my brother being so young kind of made my dad a more open person. My dad's also just, I think he's naturally that way. He's like an emotional, vulnerable person. So there was mm -hmm. never like a weird, there was never like that 
stereotypical dad like who can't tell their kid they love him like doesn't show affection like that's never been my dad he's like the complete opposite guy like you you know he's a complete opposite yeah. dude like so i think though that it started with my parents and now it's like obviously like, as time goes on every generation is going to be more and more that way but i think that it ultimately started with them yeah and too like you hope that you know you make it a point to dive deeper in or hone in on those things that your dad and mom are instilling in you. But I think it's important too. I know a lot of people that don't have that kind of relationship with their parents yeah. and it's figuring out like, okay, if I don't have this, what do I want to value when I have kids or what do I want to instill in those kids? Because I go back and I mean, there's a lot of dads that I'm thinking about right now. My dad, my grandfather, my granddad, my uncle Johnny, my uncle Mark, like, well, my uncle Mark didn't have kids, but he had, um, a wife that had kids. And so I think of them because he was a part of their life. And it, it's one of those things where you'll never have enough time with them. Um, but through it, you learn that you had a lot of time with them. And what I mean by that is like, we had family dinners, we had vacations, we had this, we had that, we had the ups and downs and peaks and valleys. And each one of those men had their great attributes. And each one of those men had things that fucking sucked about them that people wish that they could have changed or that they would have changed. And I think that's important to remember that we're not perfect. And I know that we want to look at our parents as if they are perfect, especially like for me, my father, um, my Superman, my hero, the guy I looked up to for everything. Like he was my Michael Jordan of life, the guy that I thought had it all, even though I knew that he struggled. Um, but when they pass away, you, you don't look at that. You, you look at the good times that you've had with them and, um, and also take those bad times to be like, I don't want this to be a part of me or I don't want this to carry on in my family one day. And it's not necessarily a super bad thing, but it's just like, ah, it hit me the wrong way growing up or I'm looking at it now like, oh, maybe there was a problem there. Yeah. Um, and it's just taking that and correcting it. So that way it, you don't pass that on to your kids or you remember that feeling. And yeah. for so long, I didn't talk about this topic um, because it's not easy. And when you talk to somebody about it, everybody's like, oh, I know what you're going through. Like, I'm so sorry. It's like, it, it's one thing I hate. You don't know what the fuck I'm going through. And yeah, I don't even care. If it's the same like situation, like everybody's like the little intricacies of it are all different. Like you're never going to be yes. able to experience the exact same thing. Yep. And like, that's a conversation that I had with my mom about my granddad passing is, you know, she's so blessed because she got to see, or he got to see her kids grow up. He got to see her get married. He got to see um, the ups and downs of her life. He got to get her, her first job, like all of these different things. And uh, she was like, so I'm, I'm blessed, but it's still so hard because of this. I have another buddy who his dad passed away when he was 12 years old. My dad passed away right before I was 21. So the way I look at it is like, he was about to to hand me over to the world and be like, here you go, son. The world is yours. Take what I taught you. You're now a man. Take it for what it is and, and make me proud. And so the fact that he never gets to see that, the fact that I had to walk yeah. my sister down the aisle, the fact that um, he won't be here for when my kids are born, it hurts. And everybody, when they would come through the funeral line, would always tell me like, it'll get easier. It'll get easier. And uh, there was one person like two months after that, it was like, Fred, I'm sorry. He's like, I, I got to tell you, you're the man of the house. Now you got to take care of your mom and your sister. You got to fill those shoes that your dad did. And it's never going to get easier. You're just going to learn how to deal with it. Yeah. And I got goosebumps again, like literally saying that because it's so true. Um, but I think it, it it's important to shine light on these holidays because that's that's when you hear from everyone. That's when everyone's checking in like, Freddie, how you doing? Freddie, your dad was a great man. Man, this memory I have with your dad. How's your mom and your sister? Everybody's checking in on these days. Father's Day, their birthday, Christmas, Thanksgiving. Um, but if you have somebody in your life that has lost a family member that was close to them, it's not the holidays that they want you to reach out. So it's random Tuesdays, Thursdays that I've talked about before. Um, where nobody's around, where they feel empty, where they feel vacant, where they get that feeling like it was just yesterday when it all happened. Um, and it never ends. I don't care how old somebody gets. Um, if you're a parent listening to this and you have a kid that's going through this, 
reach out to them on Father's Day, on Mother's Day, on Christmas, on that random Tuesday, on that random Wednesday. It's your job now. If you have a friend, a best friend, reach out to them uh, because it never gets easier. I'm blessed because I have great friends around me that check in on me randomly throughout the year. You do in your own way without realizing it. If you do realize it, Tone does, Matt does, Justin does, Jared does. Um, and I have plenty of people that I reach out to as well. But what I'm saying is if there's somebody in your life that you're close to and you know that they once hurt because of something that happened, something tragic where they lost that person in their life that meant so much to them, they will never get to a certain age. They will never get over a hump. They will never get through it where they don't need you to reach out. So no matter what it is, if I can give anybody advice is reach out to those people daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever the cadence is or how much you talk to them, but just check in and ask them how they're really doing. Uh, we have a lot of good conversations when we're together and when the boys get together and how you doing? Oh, we're doing good. It's like, no, how you doing? What's, what's, what's going on yeah. in your mind? What's going on in life? And we're blessed to have formed that, um, that friendship and that bond. Uh, because it goes a lot further and it keeps people at peace knowing that somebody cares um, when in their head it's telling them to just give up, to stop, to not do this, not do that. But they got that one person that just randomly checked on them to give them that spark again, to, to keep the positivity and the mindset going and remembering like, fuck, I got to do this for them. I have to, I got to make them proud. And uh, there's there's never a point in this journey of DTI that we've been through where it's like, we have to do this for somebody. We're solely doing this because we believe and we love it. But I will tell you that I will never ever do anything for anybody, but I will use those people as somebody to keep me motivated, yeah. to keep me from not falling back in that dark path, to keep me moving forward through the good and the bad days. Because let me tell you, the good is good and the bad's fucking bad, but the bad days make the good days better. And remembering what it was like and what those feelings were is like, fuck, I'm trying to run away from those as much as I can, not to get away from them and forget about them, but to keep moving in the same momentum or the same direction to keep elevating up in life, to use the things that they taught you to keep moving forward, to use those things that they talked about or that they struggled with. So that way it never catches up to you because that's what they would want. And so those are the people who I do it for is my granddad, my uncles, my father, uh, my friends that passed away, um, because guess what? They don't have the chance right now to share their story. They didn't have the chance to do what they wanted to at the end of their life. They still have more life to live. They, they didn't want God to be like, it's your time to come up. But guess what? It happened. And they left a lot of things. They left a lot of people with questions in their head. They left a lot of people with hard feelings. They let a lot of people or left a lot of people questioning why, why me, why this, why you? But what we have to remember and what we have to keep preaching is that God does truly put his strongest people through these situations, through these times, and that one day, hopefully it does all make sense, even though it doesn't right now. Um, but what wouldn't make sense is giving up on life because they're not here anymore and living out their dreams and their passions as well. And making sure that their name never dies. Making sure that I personally, since we're, we're talking about my situation, but making sure that I never let my dad's name die like I, I once was letting it. Where I was scared to talk about it because I didn't want people to judge me. I didn't want people to feel pity for me. I didn't want people to treat me differently. And so I held it all in. I kept it all in. And now I use it as that motivation and that driving force to just try and be better each and every day. And I am far from fucking perfect, but I know that every day I'm a better person than I was before. And if I think I fell back or I think I made a mistake, I know that I have time to correct it and move forward. And so anybody struggling out there with a loss, with somebody not being here, just remember that it doesn't get fucking easier. And as the days go on, you get you learn how to deal with it. And to talk about it because holding it in will make you want to stop. It will make you want to sit on the couch. It will make you not want to get out of bed. But tell their story. Tell your story. Express why they're so important to you. And then find those people in your life that even if you're not close to them right now, this 
or that situation made you realize like, I want to get closer to X, Y, and Z person and make it happen. Because at the end of the day, if this case does happen, which it is going to happen to all of us, as hard as it is, you will, you will be able to sleep better at night knowing you have no regrets, knowing that that person that you love, that person that you care about, that person that brought you into the world or is a part of your world knows how you felt and you guys dealt with it head on, whatever situation, good or bad, you dealt with. And you can now live in honor or honor them through your life and your dreams and passions because of them and what they taught you. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> even if you aren't going through a loss or you haven't experienced loss, like you said, it's going to happen to everyone. And so like, it's easy for, I have both my parents, so it's easy to take that for granted. But you just said it, uh, they had a lot more life left to live. And everyone, no matter when you go, always has more life to live. But for that reason, you need to live right now. Like, whatever you want to do, fuck what anybody else thinks. Like, go after whatever you want to go after for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's just going to be you. It's a very sad thing, like, to say. But, like, it really, like, you're the only one who can do it. You're the only one who honestly cares about achieving your dreams and your goals. People will support you along the way, but you're the only one who's going to be able to make it happen. Oh, that was a weird way for me to say happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> only one who can make it happen. So just don't take it for granted. Like we only have so much fucking time here and yep. we're all going to want more of it. So just do it now. Yep. That was like uh we were texting the other day and I'm not going to get into it, but you asked me, Hey, do you, I'm like, bro, no, Go after your dreams. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. Mm -hmm. Make time for those things that you want to achieve, you want to accomplish, you want to see through. Like, life is so fucking short, and we put so much pressure on ourselves to think that everything is perfect. Bro, if I started writing down all the shit that happened in our household growing up, good and bad, people would be like, oh, damn, I didn't go through that. But guess what, yeah. Freddie? This is what happened in mine. And I'm like, damn, I didn't go through that stuff. Everybody's got a story. Everybody wished that their parents could have done X, Y, or Z different. Your parents aren't fucking perfect. They learned from your grandparents. Your grandparents aren't fucking perfect. They learned from their grandparents. And so we have to remember that just as much as we're learning in life, as we're developing, as we're growing into this person we want to be and what we're putting out there and spreading in this world, our parents are doing the same thing. And life wasn't just like they weren't given a script and it's like, this is how you raise your kid. They didn't know that one decision they made was going to affect you the rest of their, your life. But talk about those things and communicate because that's what makes it easy. I'm sure that there's been plenty of times where something happened in your guys' household and you guys might have got pissed at each other or you guys might have not seen eye to eye, but you worked through it because you talked. And if not, then over time you saw like, oh, maybe this is why like, just because we're on fathers, this is why dad's like this because his father might have not been X, Y, and Z. Like, I think back to it. I hear stories about my grandfather and I'm like, oh man, maybe that's why my dad kind of acted that way or held it in or yeah. didn't express certain things. And so that's another thing we got to remember. Like we think that our parents just got this script from God and was like, this is what you're going to do to your kids. This is how you're going to raise them. But no, they went through their own fucking life things and they raised you as best as they thought they could raise you. And guess what? Your dad probably has things where he's like, fuck, I wish I would have done this different or your mom does. I wish I would have done this different, but I did this really well. Again, yeah. we are learning through all stages of life and we have to remember that nobody is fucking perfect. And if they're doing something that pisses you off, talk about it or realize that it might not be because of them. It might stem from things in their past that we didn't know because we came into their life halfway through it at this point. Yeah, it's just a weird concept because like as a kid, it's they're the people who look out for you. So you assume like that they know everything. Mm -hmm. And like, as you grow up, you start to realize, oh, like they were just figuring this shit out too. Like I was thinking about the other day, I am about to be 30 years old. And at this age, my mom had an 11 and a nine year old. I don't know what I would do with <laughs> an 11 and a nine year old right now. Like obviously oh. I would have had 11 years to like figure it out. Yeah. But, like thinking about where I am and like what my life consists of. <laughs> To just have that thrusted on you is insane. And so obviously you're going to fuck up. You're going to make mistakes. It's everyone's going to do it. Yeah. It, it's just insane. Because as a kid, you don't think that. They just seem like they got everything put together. And it's all figured out. And we're going to be good. But they were 
probably struggling. <laughs> yeah, big time. Like, and that's the thing. Everything looks picture perfect from the outside because we get to display what we want to about mm -hmm. our lives. If this thing, if like people could look and actually hear every um, intrusive thought that somebody had or the deep down secrets or thoughts or whatever the fuck they are, this world would be a completely different place. I'd be so, locked up. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we live in this world where everything seems to be picture perfect. But bro, who knows it? Somebody could be uh, fighting for their house right now to keep that from the bank because they can't make payments. Somebody could be getting fired from their job and we don't know about it. Somebody could be $20,000 in credit card debt. Like, bro, when I was in credit card debt, I didn't tell none of y'all. I didn't talk about that because I was like, I'm not telling. Oh my God, I got myself nah. in this hole. I got to get myself out. Guess what though? When I got out of it, I was like, you know what? More people need to hear about this because 90% of Americans, if not more, get in some sort of debt like that where it's like, fuck, I need to bounce back. I need to buckle up and I need to figure out a path forward. And so now, dude, the Dave Ramsey book, I've sent it to a couple handful of people because the person that gave me it, I made that promise that once I did it, I would return the yeah. favor to others. So I buy that book for others. Not to say I agree with everything Dave says, because I agree don't agree with a lot of things Dave says. In fact, I think I disagree with more than I agree with him. Um, but what it does is it gives you a roadmap to be able to follow and understand like, okay, this is what it would take to achieve the goal of debt free, if that's what you want, or to pay my credit cards off. We'll leave it simple at that. That is the same thing that our parents did. They got a book based off of what they saw growing up. And they took that script and they reviewed it, analyzed it, and were like, I'm going to change this a little bit and tweak it because I hated when mom and dad did this. Mm -hmm. I saw mom and dad struggle here and here. So I'm going to make sure that I communicate better. I saw mom and dad. I saw, I saw, I'm going to tweak, tweak, tweak. And next thing you know, they got their script. And that script naturally gets handed to us. And I am sure that there are things that if you talk to your brother and had a deep down conversation. Oh, it's already happened. I already know. Yeah. His name's Jake, right? Jacob, Jacob, yeah. Jacob is now like, oh man, he's got the two kids, and he's like, I, I love this about our household growing up. Mom, Dad, I didn't really like this, so I'm changing this in my family. Whether he expresses it to him or not, I'm sure you can see it based off of being over there, how he interacts with his kids, his wife, etc. And so, it, oh, if you think I'm blunt, my brother is way worse. He really probably does. He probably does tell them. <laughs> it's crazy because I still have never met him. That is crazy. Through everything. Even like the camping way back in the day before we were even super close. Like never. Mm -hmm. He had little, little ones back then probably. Yeah. He was like in high school. Yep. So, but yeah, I guess the moral of the story is. Um, we Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love you, Dad. <laughs> um. We go through these like different phases in life where sometimes things bother us. Sometimes things don't. We go through the hard times to then get us to the good times. And then the good times take us back to the hard times. What we need to remember is that life is not like this. You cannot climb a peak to get you to this flat part of this. And it's going to ride and stay there. So what the fuck was that? <laughs> life is like this. It's like, it's up and down and up and down. It is not just a, oh my God, life sucks. Life. Oh, now we hit this flat part and life is going to be good. And so you have to remember it. And as you're going through these things that it will fluctuate and the bad days will come back. The good days will stick longer and longer. The more you keep pushing forward, but don't think that you can just get to this magical place where everything is fine. Everything is dandy and everything is just going to keep riding that way in life because God will throw you another fucking bone or stick or pothole in the road that you're going to have to try and get over or whatever. Um, so be open-minded and, and realize that you're not fucking perfect and nobody else is. So stop putting so much pressure one on life, but two on other people and just enjoy it and, and make those memories and the times last while we are all here. Um, so that way you can look back and reflect um, on those and then just use those to keep pushing forward towards your dreams and goals. Next time, I'll just do it with my hand instead of trying to use this little. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I was like, what is he even using right now? When it <laughs> curled up, I was real confused. It's the uh, Velcro for the mic cord. So that way oh, it stays okay. together. Okay. Hey, your teeth aren't purple, so. Uh-uh. A little bit. Good to go. 
But that's all I got, man. Happy Father's Day to the fathers out there. Um, Dylan, we're fur baby fathers, so, you know, we can take that. Um, first one, dude. First one. Same for me, actually. Um, so, yeah, make those times, make those memories. Stop putting so much pressure on people. And um, you're not fucking perfect, so stop expecting other people to be perfect that you look up to or that raised you. And um, live life to the fullest. Make every day fucking count. Tell your mom we said hi, though, because we can't forget about them. Have the desire to inspire. It's all. Peace.